This time on episode 364 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we discuss WandaVision, season one, episode six, all new Halloween Spectacular, weekly Marvel news, and your feedback. I'm Chris from Play Comics, a show where we look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material, a part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other astonishingly geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. You have been granted clearance by director Alfonso Mac McKenzie. Stand by for a shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Lauren. I'm Agent Michelle. And I'm producer of the show, SP. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. This show is recorded on Sunday, February 14th, 2021, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast New Jersey-wide via www.geeks.live. Come join our live chat as we record. Ladies, happy National Organ Donor Day. This is a very important thing, so I don't really have anything funny to say about it. No, it is indeed important. It was actually started in 1998 by the Saturn Corporation and its United Auto Workers Partners with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Support and many nonprofit health organizations. I do have to say that I know on state licenses, you know, it says organ donor, but also make sure that your family knows it because sometimes family members will like overwrite it. So for example, you know, I have a check my mom has it checked and we both have told each other that um, nothing usable should be left before you know like burial or cremation or anything like that so make sure your family knows we did a round a few years ago where everybody knew what everybody's wishes were and sounds like we need to do that again just because you know after a few years everybody forgets so good yeah. reminder to say what your wishes are one way or another and anybody who is a donor knows an organ donor um yeah thumbs up and as a related note due to heart transplants happy valentine's day to everyone here happy valentine's day and with that we'll just get on with the rest of the show legends of shield is a fan-based podcast on the marvel cinematic and comic book universes because of breaking that fourth wall if you would like to talk to us about breaking the fourth wall you can visit our website legendsofshield.com you can leave us a voice message at our voicemail 844 the bus one that's 844-843-2871 we're on facebook legends of shield podcast we're also on Twitter at Legends of Shield. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash gunnageek. You can tell your Amazon device to enable Legends of Shield skill. You can join our Discord server at gunnageek.com slash Discord. And remember, Legends of Shield is a proud member of the gunnageek.com network. And talking about breaking the fourth wall, again, I have to denote my slight disappointment that Deadpool was not the first crossover in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the Fox Universe. I just I I just need to say it because, you know, he's great at breaking the fourth wall, right? I don't think that is official, which we'll talk about. Oh, all right. So we'll get into that. All right. That's a good segue. Here we go. WandaVision Season 1, Episode 6, All New Halloween Spooktacular, was published to Disney Plus. Plush. Was published to Disney Plus on February 12th, 2021, just two days ago. And Lauren, I think we have a familiar name with our director. We do indeed. The director is once again Matt Shackman, who has 51 directing credits starting in 2002, including 
one of Judging Amy, one of Six Feet Under, two of Everybody Hates Chris, three of Ugly Betty, five of House, five of Psych, four of Revenge, six of The Good Wife, two of Game of Thrones, and nine episodes of WandaVision. And Michelle, we have some, it looks like, new writers this week. This episode has two writers. The first is Peter Cameron, has nine writing credits starting in 2009, including five Delusion, Lies Within, two Carnival Row, and one WandaVision. Also written by Chuck Hayward, has 12 writing credits starting in 2011, one of Fred the Show, 20 Wendell and Vinny, the staff writer, um, staff writer for six, one Big Happy, written seven Dear White People, two Mix, mix Ish, and one WandaVision. And the showrunner for the entire run here of WandaVision is Jack Schaefer, who we really haven't run down yet. She is uh, experienced in the MCU. She has been a writer on Black Widow, and she also has some other credits that are appropriate. We'll run that down next week. That is my bad for not putting it in the documents. But Jack Schaefer has been doing a wonderful job. I think we just have not been able to talk about her yet. I just wanted to send an homage to Jack because she has, I think we would all agree, has done a good job with this show so far. Absolutely. All right. All new Halloween spooktacular. We weren't able to pontificate about the title last week because it wasn't out yet, but this was definitely a 90s special sitcom sort of thing, right? So, Michelle, do you want to run down what we think the title means of this episode? It's that traditional sitcom Halloween episodes. Even sitcoms now have really cool Halloween episodes. My favorite is Brooklyn Nine-Nine with the thief. They always try to steal something from each other. And it's always the challenge. And the last one was really amazing because of Rosa and all of that type of stuff. But then you have like the community ones. There's always just... The Halloween episode, the Thanksgiving episode, the Christmas episode. Sometimes there's the Valentine's Day episode. There's always that special holiday episode where you try to do something a little special to make it stand out. Yeah, um, one of my, like you said, the Brooklyn Nine-Nine ones have been amazing. One of my favorite recent ones, it's technically a sitcom, but it's animated, Bob's Burgers. So every year, yeah, they do the Thanksgiving episode, Christmas episode, uh, Halloween episode, and they're always fun. Oh, the Bob's Burgers have to brine the turkey. The brining (laughs) stress that Bob goes under. The one where he starts hallucinating and it's like Totoro. It's it's very good. (laughs) You brought up community and just get away from the holiday ones. Community had, you know, the famous paintball episode. So. I mean, those were an annual special episode, at least for two years. Was it two paintball special episodes or was it three? I I can't remember. I think it's two paintball. There was the pillow fort versus blanket episode uh, with Abed and Troy. Yeah, there's, you know, sitcoms always try to have these special episodes that sets them apart. And this was definitely based on a sitcom, as they all have been. This was largely based, from what I hear, because I didn't watch it, Malcolm in the Middle. Somebody please explain the show to me. Okay. I used to watch this uh, back when I was in high school. The whole thing is it's kind of a lower middle class family. Mom's played by um, Jane. I'm blanking on her last name. The dad is... Famously, Walter White, Brian Cranston, Frankie Muniz is the titular Malcolm in the middle. He's the middle of uh, three children of no, four brothers. I'm sorry. There's four. It's just that the older one is usually away at military school. And it's just their hijinks. Uh, Fun. Well, not really fun fact about that. Frankie Muniz has a seizure disorder and as a result does not remember filming like any of malcolm in the middle which could be good and and is probably bad but uh, yeah i've I've heard that when this came up i started doing some research into malcolm in the middle and that is in in my opinion horrible i think losing your mind is one of the most horrific things i could ever do 
And unfortunately, Alzheimer's runs in my genetic family. Same. Yeah. And in the episodes, Malcolm would talk to the camera, breaking that fourth wall. So that was, you know, what he did. The theme song was also pretty reminiscent. It was a They Might Be Giants song as the theme. And it had that very kind of 90, like late 90s pop punk sound to it. It still gets stuck in my head all the time. It looked like they also experimented with using handheld video cameras as they were filming as well. It was a stereotypical single camera shot, but you also had handheld from, I guess, one of the characters. I, I don't know. I believe. Okay, so it's been years since I saw Malcolm in the Middle, but did he have a camera? I don't rem- I know he talked to the camera, but I don't remember if. But yeah, that that style of um, kind of the frenetic handheld looking running through the house was very much Malcolm in the middle. And I think we've ex- ex- uh, I think we've upped our resolution to 1080 and 16 by nine for for the uh, aspect ratio. But I don't think we're at 4K yet. I, I don't know. It, it could have been 4K <laughs> for all I know. I doubt it. OK, well, I mean, WandaVision, not. Yeah, the- I know. I know. Okay. I I don't think, um, like, they advertise their stuff that's in 4K, and I don't believe they've made a big deal of WandaVision. Okay. Well, we have some big things to discuss in this episode. We have, well, let's just start with the costumes, because that leads to Vision leaving town. So let's talk about the costumes, the Halloween costumes here. Having those traditional 90s outfits. Wanda coming along saying it's a Sokovian fortune teller. Vision, the Lucha Libre thing, that was the cover, but that was his old costume. It's just the 90s comic geek in me was just, wow. I mean, they had the tights, the head thing. It was just so good and so cheesy. Great. Yeah, I I geeked out. They even got the quicksilver hair with the the little hair thingies sticking up like weird rabbit ears. They did a good job of making it look like a DIY Halloween costume, which I've thrown together a few of those when I was in high school because I was like, oh, I'm too old for trick or treating. And then the night of I'm like, I want candy. So in regards to the Sokovian fortune teller thing. There was a really good essay by Gavia Baker Whitelaw. She's on Twitter at Hello Taylor. And she does a lot of writing about specifically, as her name implies, costuming. And she did an article, I think, for the Daily Dot, or else it was Medium, about this, the costume, Wanda's costume in specific, really kind of highlighted a problem with the film character so in the comics scarlet witch and quicksilver are half jewish half roma roma is the term that the actual community uses the you know g slur is don't use that it's bad but when joss whedon cast Elizabeth Olsen and Aaron Taylor Johnson, who are both white, it kind of ignores a big part of that heritage. And you've heard me talk a lot about how representation is powerful, representation matters. And here, there's that, you know, they don't use the G slur, they use fortune teller, but it's still that stereotype of the Roma community. I think they handled it better than some properties I've seen, but I really recommend reading that essay. Again, Gavia Baker Whitelaw, Hello Taylor. It's very, very educational. Talking about the costumes in Halloween and Trick or Treat, all of a sudden, six episodes in, the town is suddenly full of kids. They come out of nowhere. The streets are abreast with kids everywhere trick-or-treating and even in the outskirts of town we'll talk about that later but 
all the children are here and Pietro actually calls Wanda out on it later said where are they all coming from were they just asleep in their beds because that makes sense to me but we finally get children so I think the children were there all the time we speculated on where they were I think the show gave us a glimpse as to where they were what, what do you guys think Michelle I think they've been in some sort of sleep stasis we saw as vision went to the outskirts of town the woman who was just standing there trying to hook the halloween decoration and there's that tear and behind her you see the guy putting down like the a pumpkin and then bringing it back up it's that same motion so it seems as though they are yeah, they're kept in like a stasis. And as Pietro Quicksilver said, you know, why traumatize them? Just bring them out for cameos when needed. It says something that I'm so used to Halloween episodes that it didn't occur to me like, oh, wait, the kids weren't here until about halfway through the episode. The first time I saw it, it's just like, oh, wait, Vision brought up there's no kids. So now, of course, in response, you do a very, like the holiday is about kids. It's kids trick-or-treating, it's costumes, it's candy. So again, we see Wanda's mind reacting to all of that. So Wanda says something in the middle of the street that could be a door opening to a lot of areas, a lot of multiverses. She says the words, kick ass. Now, on the surface, it's just her saying, oh, this is cool that Quicksilver is going out and doing it. But behind the scenes, both Quicksilvers in the MCU and Fox were in this other additional movie called Kick-Ass. So maybe this is her realizing where she's seen both of them before, or maybe she's gone into a multiverse and picked one. I don't know. I think it's just an Easter egg. Okay. I think when he said to her, I don't know why I look different. I just remember getting shot. He actually remembers the Age of Ultron storyline. And when they're talking at the end, she actually sees him dead, like her actual twin. I think it was one of those things to make us just speculate at the end of last episode. And then now, because he actually says, of course, I look different. And of course, that Halloween memory is different. You're remembering it differently because you're suppressing all that trauma. And that's really what's going on. Even Monica comments about like how she knows what she's going through, that immense amount of grief. So, yeah, she's suppressing trauma. She's not really too sure. I think that's part of because she actually said, you know, I was feeling nothingness and loneliness and. Now this is going on. This leads to a phenomenal thing that could be where she is probing Pietro, Wanda is probing Pietro on his memories. So this leads us into, we think this is a big recasting in the MCU, but we see a glimpse of the fact that Quicksilver had death on him with the gunshots on him and everything just like he had in the movie so what is going on with pietro here i'm wondering if he's less susceptible due to the fact that he is presumably not from this dimension this world he like we said he breaks the fourth wall not at every turn but enough to be kind of unnerving that whole where's your accent where's yours this show has been very good at making me question like the nature of what is going on who knows what we know that wanda knows like before this i felt sad and lonely we don't have any specifics she doesn't say oh i remember breaking into the shield building or sword building She just remembers a feeling. Yeah, we we don't know. I'm wondering, 
I know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, let's just get into it. I know everyone's excited about Billy and Tommy and everyone thinks that they're going to get Speed and Wiccan and all of these things. Everything in there depends on Wanda's viewpoint. Why does he look that way? Well, she can't really bring everything to forefront. And so he looks different. When it it comes for me, you know, there's two things. First, when Vision leaves, he starts to disintegrate and go back to his dead body. And then that commercial, you have the person on the island starving and magic's supposed to be this nourishment. It can't. You can't live off of magic. Magic does not sustain life. Do I, would it be really cool if Wicked and Speed were going to come? Sure. But I think everyone needs to be prepared for them to go away once this is resolved because everything is Wanda's vision. I'm still going back with that. And, you know, she wanted, you know, she talked about her brother a couple of times. Then there's her brother. She sees the dog. All of a sudden, Agnes has the dog house. It's all of this like weird subconscious thing that's going on. Related to that, I have a bit of a theory, too, and it's kind of springboarding off something we talked about last week. Y'all remember last week when I was like, did she make the kids out of that shield agent or a sword agent? Yeah. Agent Franklin. Yeah. We know that she has Vision's body. She can alter matter, but she can't create it. So since she doesn't have vibranium, she doesn't have any of the stuff that he's made of. She needed the raw components. Presumably, she needed the raw components for two small human beings. She needs the raw components for Pietro, but he's dead. He is long dead. He is bones at this point. So what's the thing to do? Grab the nearest one. I think there's some of that of her projecting those memories into that body. But because he's not from here and... Because it's Pietro, but it's not. I think that's a little bit of what's doing that, that fourth wall breaking. Interesting deep thoughts here on where things go. And Michelle, thank you very much for clearing up that Yo Magic commercial. All the commercials so far have been traumatic events in Wanda's life. If this is foreshadowing her tragic moment of the kids not being real that's interesting two things slightly related to that one remember that billy and tommy did disappear at the end of house of m their souls remained because at that point they were full-fledged people the souls were basically just kind of popped into bodies and yeah the other thing i saw a theory and i hadn't connected this at all i don't even remember why i saw this theory. i think i saw it on reddit if you look at each of the commercials first you have that toaster that apparently and i need to rewatch it apparently kind of vaguely resembles a design on vision that's the mind stone you have the hydra watch that's the I forget which one. Time. Time. Yeah, the time stone. Yes, thank you. Obviously. You have the Lagos towels. It's wiping up red. That's the power stone. You have the Hydra soap. It's blue cosmic cube. You go on and on. And this one with the guy that dies, the kid in the claymation commercial that dies, could be the soul stone because you have to kill someone to get it. It does kind of makes sense for that kind of little tie in there yeah very dark unfortunately vision has gone out on his own and he breaks with the script for wanda wanda does not have the power to control him he goes out to the edge of town he sees that the town is a buzz on the inside of town but as farther you go out towards the edge of the hex you get less control, as Michelle was talking about earlier, and quite frankly, you get just less of light and 
animation in everybody and everything. He sees Agnes as he's leaving and he has a conversation with Agnes like he had with Norm the time before. I think that there might have been a little foolery going on with Agnes, but that's just me. Now I see Lauren is just clapping at the chance to talk here. So Lauren, what do you got? Okay. I have been very vocal at thinking that Agnes is Agatha Harkness, who in the Marvel comics is a very powerful witch. Here, either that's true or the writers are trolling us because she's dressed as a witch. Even, you know, at the end of her conversation, she starts to do a witch cackle. She's there at the edge of town. She's just staring in her car, saying again some really creepy things. And then when Vision tries to snap her out of it, that's when she's like, oh, my God, you're an Avenger. Am I dead? Because you're dead. And then she freaks out. I don't know what's going on with her, but I'm still convinced she's Agatha Harkness. My brain is just back on the Infinity Stone thing. Scarlet Witch was blip, right? Wanda was... Yeah, she. we see her being dissolved, holding Vision's body at the end of Infinity War. So when Wanda came back, you know, we saw when Monica came back, so Wanda comes back, sees Thanos, almost takes out Thanos herself. I really think she could have done it anyway. But, you know, we had to have the whole book in of Iron Man and, and such, which I understand Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man started it and him having that ending was poetic and great. <laughs> Here you have someone whose last moment was holding the person she loved, getting snapped. Then coming back, seeing the being who just killed. So with her mind, he just killed Vision. So afterwards, we don't really know what happens to her afterwards. So here she is coming back from the nothingness. Thanos is, and there's, yeah, it's close to that. This is, seems to be almost like right Right after. I was going to say, it seems like it has to be at the very most a couple of months. We don't have an entire timeline of everything that happens. At the end of Endgame, they have that funeral scene. I don't know how long it is between when the blip happened and everybody comes back in the funeral scene. What we do know for Monica, she came back and then within a few weeks, she was back on the job. And this happens right there. Also, in the grand Marvel scheme of things, in the MCU timeline, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was supposed to come out before WandaVision. So I don't know if Falcon and the Winter Soldier actually happens before, or maybe they retconned it so it happens after or whatever. But we're in, like you said, less than a couple of months from the end of Endgame, judging by Monica's timeline alone. And, and Wanda is on that same timeline. I read that the reason why they could have done it is Feige said it doesn't really mess with the phase four timeline of storytelling. That's why he was able to do it. So they didn't have to really retcon anything with Falcon and Winter Soldier. Okay. One of the reasons, and this really, this conversation really drove it home. It had been something I'd thought about, but one of the reasons that Monica is so sympathetic to Wanda is, again, they are both mourning basically the most important person in their lives at that point who died you know years ago but to them it was literally like yesterday they have not had time to process that grief everybody's telling them oh it was years ago basically just move on and the people around them don't seem to have been snapped we know hayward wasn't for sure so there's that, you know, at, at this point, they are two of the people who understand that experience the most. Grief is always weird anyway, like people acting like there's only one right way to grieve. There's only one right way to process. Everybody grieves differently. We see which we see Monica throwing herself back into work, which is 
you know, a lot of people do. It's keep moving so you don't collapse. And we see Wanda, who is basically clinging and unable to let go, which is also a thing that happens a lot. I feel like both of these are kind of maladaptive grieving, but it's definitely something that you see to a much lesser extent in real life. Well, we have some scenes with director Hayward again, and he is definitely hiding something. I don't necessarily know if it's nefarious or not, but he's hiding something. Darcy finds out what it is, but she can't tell anybody because she gets absorbed by the hex when Wanda does her thing later on. But he does something else that is questionable. He boots the trio out, and I think for no reason whatsoever. Did I miss what his rationale was to boot? Wu and Darcy and Monica out? I think because they were questioning his authority. Yeah, he was. Que- they were questioning, and it is, he said, a, you don't know what it took to keep the lights on. And we've talked about everyone thinks that only half of life went. It would have been more than that. We've talked about what the people who were snapped were doing at the time, and if they were doing any sort of driving or being a pilot on an airplane or surgery or something like that, that would have caused other people to die. So in actuality, Thanos killed more than half the people. We have to realize that he actually did kill more than half the people. He thought he was just, oh, half, but no, he did kill more than half. And if it was also, he said like all life, so if animals went away, then there would be food issues and starvation and who knows what else. And he actually says, you don't know what it took. So here is someone, he actually has said, you have this wide-eyed optimism that has been dead for five years. They've had to go through this. So you have someone who's gone through one form of trauma, which is mourning every single way of life, for him because he was the only one left to can take control and then you have monica who's come back who's mourning the loss of her mother which feels recent and you know she still believes in the avengers and all of these things she you know has that attitude she didn't live through it so it is that two conflicting ideas and again i call them team cool they question they said that they're on Monica's side and he sees Monica, he's targeting Monica as just that representation. And it's just like, fine, you're questioning me. You represent stuff that I don't want to think about. Go away. Yeah. To the survivors, the Avengers failed. We see from Scarlet Witch's perspective, from Monica's perspective, people came back and then they defeated the bad guys. But for the people who are left behind, they saw their heroes fail. Half of the people that you know, more than half, are no longer there. It is an entire way of life gone. Like, we're dealing with this right now with, you know, the the pandemic and, you know, are things ever going to be back to normal again? And that's bad enough. I feel like that's part of the reason why this is hitting so hard when you talk about it. Because it hits differently than it does when Endgame came out. It's a different point in time. We're in the middle of it right now. We're in the middle of that five years, so to speak. Gosh, I hope it doesn't last five years. But we'd be in the middle of it right now when you equate it to the pandemic. For sure. Yeah. So let me talk about Darcy for a second. She now joins the ranks, in my opinion, of Sandra Bullock and Angelina Jolie as having come out of pretty much nowhere with some wild hacking skills. The girl knows how to do things. So uh, based on the fact that Sandra Bullock and Angelina Jolie are like Academy Award winners, I think Kat Dennings should be an Academy Award winner just for pulling that off. I mean, no arguments from me. I love Kat Dennings. Yeah, when I was watching, I was like, okay, I will buy that she switched her major from poli sci to astrophysics and got a doctorate, especially if she was left behind in the snap. But where did 
she learned to have is that like another thing that it was like okay well this is my this is my blip project it's like i was concentrating on learning spanish and doing cross stitching maybe darcy took an ethical hacking course or something yeah look i'm not going to take anything away from either darcy or cat jennings i think that she has those skills and and i'll just run with it because cat even when she was the assistant to Jane, she was, uh, Darcy was, she had skills. She just didn't have the opportunities in front of her. Now she's had the opportunities and she's been part of some major Avengers stuff throughout the years. Speaking of skills, Jimmy Woo went from the like straight laced FBI agent wanting to learn close up magic in Ant-Man and the Wasp to beating up sword agents and knowing how to hotwire cars. Respect. And can we get the sword spinoff with Monica, Jimmy, and Darcy, like, now, please? Yeah, I mean, the whole sword thing, this podcast is titled Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We followed, we followed S.H.I.E.L.D. for a very long time, and our intro is still calling the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything. I haven't changed that over to sword because, well, uh, we're not quite sure if sword's going to stick around for a while or not. So I'm just, I'm waiting off on that a little bit. Maybe this is how we get Agents of Atlas. In the comics, Jimmy Woo is in charge of Agents of Atlas. I don't remember what that backronym is for, but maybe S.W.O.R.D., this is the most we'll see of them, and then from now on, it's Agents of Atlas. So the next episode, we haven't started on pontificating on next episode because we still have to talk about a couple of big things here. But next episode, I think cat dennings could definitely be a waitress in in a, a a cupcake shop you know a diner that sort of thing so uh prepared to see cat dennings reprise her role as two broke girls next week that is a 2000 sitcom so it's not out of the question yeah it's not necessarily a family sitcom though so yeah it, it would be nice to throw that in there like the family goes out to the diner and stuff like that yeah yeah i could see that although it was in the middle of new york so i do think She's not going to be at the end. I thought it was great. They all turn into circus people, but she technically wasn't part of the circus. So I'm thinking she's not going to be part of the circus. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. And speaking about the whole, you know, the hex expanding because Vision's trying to crawl out. He wants to, he's trying to tell them what's going on. And he starts as soon as he's out of the barrier to the hex he starts breaking apart and that whole oh they wouldn't kill him again marvel come on we've now seen this guy die three times but to save him oh three four four when jarvis dies oh good. well jarvis doesn't really die so much as he transforms yeah well okay So, yeah, Wanda expands the hex to put him back in there. And, you know, by doing so, encompasses the sword outpost. What would we call that? Command center? Darcy, who was like, help him, gets handcuffed to a car because, yeah, Hayward's a jerk. I think that's important. I think the reason why Hayward didn't have people help him is, is for a reason. I, I don't think he was stuttering no i think i think he wanted to see what would happen because it is technically testing a theory that okay this guy who's dead out here and alive in there what happens if he goes from in there to out here yeah i think he was like okay let's wait and see okay then we have Monica going to meet her guy, by the way. Let's not forget about that. We're going to see the scientist probably next episode. She did say an hour, which I have not. By the way, for those that haven't listened to our last episode, you timed last episode the amount of time that was spent in WandaVision. I didn't time how long we spent in WandaVision in, in the hex in I this episode. didn't do that either, so I will have to do it this time. Last time when I timed it. The time spent inside the hex, it was just short of 22 minutes or the standard network's half-hour sitcom runtime. So we could get that. And of course, I, you know what? Did that timing that you accounted for count for one as time outside the hex or not? No, I paused it then. 
Okay, so if you add that, it might go up to 22, 23 minutes. Yeah, but I, I was thinking about that, but I'm like, no, I want to time the stuff that's specifically inside the hex that we would be seeing or that they would be seeing as the sitcom on the CRT TVs. Regardless, I think we're going to get the scientist next episode so Michelle can see if her theory of Dr. Selvig comes through or not. I hope so. Yeah, is it Dr. Selvig? Is it Reed Richards? Is it Jane? Who? I'm really confused and excited. Jane, wow. I guess that would be possible, wouldn't it? She does say it's my guy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So maybe not Jane. Yeah, I, I'm very curious and excited. And yeah, it, that the whole thing with the sword outpost turning into a circus and so many clowns. It's so many clowns. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to go to the circus next episode. Oy. But I also think that this whole thing is taxing Wanda's power. So first of all, she embiggens the whole place. But second of all, she was only controlling the stuff that was like right around her. So I think there's limits to what she can do. Something I saw somebody point out in regards to the circus in the comics, Clint Barton grew up in a circus and that's why he's a good trick shot. And Clint was the one who was with her brother at the end and... Yeah, so is that kind of a subconscious reference to Clint, maybe? Or she just sees them as a bunch of fools. That is also possible. Could be. Well, we'll find out next week. One last thing. We talked a bit about it last episode, but at the beginning of this episode, when Monica's like, okay, I'll just go back in. And Darcy's telling her, you can't. You've been through that barrier twice, and it's rewriting you. Which is obviously, I think, an explanation of how she's going to get her photon powers. But what about everyone who just went through it? Is only once, like, you're a little messed up, but you're fine? Are we going to get a bunch of super-powered sword agents and Darcy? I think we have to go back to our Stargate SG-1 roots there because the Zats, right, Michelle? One <laughs> Zat is stunned, two Zats is killed, three Zats is you go away, right? <laughs> I kept wondering, how does it know? Because technically, like, if you got three different people and you're shooting, one of the questions I, I think I put in, we have a chat going on and you two have seen it. One of the questions that I asked is, how does the Zat know when you're pointing at someone new? So every time you shoot, shouldn't it be like someone stunned and killed and disintegrated, stunned and killed and disintegrated because you're firing it, you know, like if you're being attacked, you go boom, 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 boom. Then shouldn't that be the pattern? It's very interesting how the rules of that device really don't make sense. Like, how does it know what you mean? The way I've been able to explain it is it's similar to absorbing a dose of radiation. Like, you know, you can get an x-ray and you're basically fine. You get exposed more and your cells start to, you know, your, your DNA starts to denature. You get a lot and you kind of melt from the inside out. I figured it was something like that where the first dose, it's bad, but it's not fatal. And you can recover from it second dose yeah it just like in, in terms of like disrupting your nervous system or something like that that's yeah the third dose of it so it, it's not that it increases in power it's that your body becomes less able to handle it so basically we have our sci-fi background of the barrier of the hex so one two okay you're still alive whatever three nope your superpower third time's yeah. a charm you're either super powered or you're going to melt from the inside out. <laughs> okay, so basically it's not the zat. It's just how many times you're hit by the zat that matters. I got hit once, so I'm stunned. If I get hit again, I'm killed. But if I'm stunned, but then I recover two hours later, if I'm hit by the zat again, do I die or have I recovered? I don't know what the recovery time on it would be because I figure it would be like, you know, the, the half-life kind of as it 
drains out of you as your body recovers from it. It's one of those things that I really wish I could ask the writers, but I don't know if that much thought was put into it. Oh, no, no, no. Matter of fact, the creators, they have come out and panels and everything. If they could change one thing, if they could go back and retcon one thing about the entire universe that they put together, it would be the Zats because that makes no sense whatsoever. And since I'm in the middle of a, a rewatch, I'm still in season one. I'm just doing it as I'm cooking dinner or something like that. I will attempt to count the times the SG-1 team members and the episodes that they're hit by Zats. And then we'll go from there. Okay. What a complete sideshow there, but... <laughs> sideshow, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week, we're going to get the circus. Uh, are you guys excited to play some circus games next week? Please, no more clowns. It really messes you up when you read about John Wayne Gacy when you're like eight or nine. I'm very nervous around clowns. I will be disappointed if there's no ducky game where you have all the ducks and you have to. It has to be the duck game. Also, I'm not sure of what sort. So we, we have three episodes left, right? This is episode six. We have three episodes left in the season. I'm not sure how many sitcoms that we're doing and, and what years we have left to do. So do you have any guesses as to what sitcom is going to be modeled on next time? We had a short discussion in our Discord server about it, but nobody could come up with a definitive, this is going to be the next sitcom. Michelle, have you put any uh, brain power to it? This is a time when I stopped watching sitcoms because it's the 90s. I was out of high school. Malcolm in the Middle is in the 2000s. That's part of the problem here. We kind of skipped over a lot There's of the There's also 90s. when they're at the theater, they see you see the, the signs for the movies that are playing. And one of them is The Parent Trap. There was a remake in the 90s. Wait. Yeah, a remake in the 90s with Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis. But The Incredibles was also there, and that movie came out in 2004. So they are playing a little fast and loose with the times to kind of add that little, like, yeah, it's a family with superpowers for The Incredibles and The Parent Trap because, I'm sorry, Jamie Lee Curtis was in Freaky Friday. The Parent Trap was Lindsay Lohan. And, you know, those are twins that were swapped. So we have twins here. I yes. read that Modern Family is probably in the running. It was on ABC. It's been, it was on ABC. It's, go, it's done now. And it was like the bigger family sitcom of late. Yeah, that and like King of Queens. So Modern Family ran from 2009 to 2020. April 2020 is when Modern Family ended. Uh, King of Queens, yeah, but there were no kids involved. Yeah, I'm pretty unaware of most 2000s sitcoms on account of I didn't watch them. And neither did I. I did a bunch of research and Modern Family kept popping up. And I'm like, okay, that's a great eight episode, episode eight. But I don't know what we're going to get in between then and there. Or it could be going back to episode one of this when we were talking about the, the first two episodes. I said, since we're talking about a sitcom length here. They might have to do like a part one and part two to end it. So next time could be Modern Family, and then we could get part one and part two of the ending. Or we're going to get an episode like we did four, three or four, where it, it was just all outside. We can get another one like that or ones. Yeah. True, but we still got with the intros they were all based on on sitcoms of the year by the way we kind of missed out on the, the full house full house was definitely started in the 80s but it's considered more of a 90s thing and we just got that one scene we didn't get anything else with full yeah, house kind of same with malcolm in the middle but we got obviously a lot more of that in this episode two and a half men was in the 2000s that's not a good feel no yeah the whole charlie sheen thing mm. yeah Really, I think the only Big one Bang that has a, that's not a family sitcom. No, it's not. The only one that's really a family sitcom that was popular that people would identify with, I think, would be Modern Family if they still do. Unless what's interesting, unless we have a regression. Oh, did you notice the used car? Yeah, like yes, and everything that was very 
did not really look modern at all. And the way that the circus was, it didn't really look modern at all. So if she has, you know, with being angry and that grief of losing vision again, because she, she pops off at P Pietro, Peter, when he's like, well, you can't kill your dead husband twice. And she just like sends him flying. And there is a cycle to grief if we want to get all, you know, and such. You can regress. You can actually, you know, you make progress and then something sets you off and you just basically at step one again. So that's an idea. So we keep huh. thinking that's forward, but that used car lot and the way it just felt and the sign that changed the Westview sign, yeah. that sort of felt. It did. You're right. Yeah. Maybe we could have like something like Modern Family or we might go you know, we might have a regression. Yeah, it might be honest. Okay, with the number of episodes we have left, there's time for 2000, 2010s, and the resolution. Or we could do what you said, a regression. And this, it seemed, it's that sort of, has an older time, but also no time that you see in some movies. Well, the car lot does date because the models of the cars are there. And now it's a used car lot. It's not a new car lot. So there's yeah. some budging that you could do with the time there. There's a new car lot that's changed when the hex expands to a used car lot. So I don't know how old those cars are. They're not brand new. They're old. And uh, it could be a, a wide range of time based on that. But you're right. The circus did seem like it was based on kind of older technology including the hot air balloon which was that was you know if i'm flying the helicopter which we all know that i hate helicopters to begin with that becomes a hot air balloon i'm i'm actually okay with that i think all helicopters should just become hot air balloons I just think that's the way it is i have been up in a hot air balloon it was fantastic and then afterwards you realize that there was like three inches of wicker between you and death or less yeah that's why I can't do. I wouldn't say I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of not having anything between me and the ground. Same. Yeah. So the idea of hot air balloons kind of horrifies me. Although we in the city I used to live in, there was a yearly like hot air balloon event where you would wake up one morning and there's just hot air balloons everywhere and it's like oh yeah i forgot it's this time of year there's a big one in uh, colorado springs there's also the biggest one i believe down in uh i think it's albuquerque new mexico it's in new mexico i think it's albuquerque anyway uh, so next week we'll be talking about an untitled wandavision season one episode seven let us know your thoughts about our pontifications here and your thoughts about wandavision meantime we got some news to get to We have some Captain Marvel 2 casting news. We do indeed. First off, we have Zawe Ashton cast as an, an unspecified but lead Captain Marvel 2 villain. You might know her. She was Sally on Sherlock. She was Joyce Vincent in the documentary Dreams of a Life, which I highly recommend. It's very good, very sad, but very good. She was in an episode of Doctor Who and also in the movie Velvet Buzzsaw with our, you know, Mysterio, Jake Gyllenhaal. Like I said, we don't know her role yet, but we also know that the confirmed cast includes Iman Vellani, who is playing Kamala Khan in the Miss Marvel series, and Tayona Paris, who plays Monica Rambeau in WandaVision. And we have a Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer. This is the one, I believe, that came out on Super Bowl Sunday. And it's, I saw it like broken a bunch of records for online trailer streaming. It looks fun. They're in couples counseling at one point. I'm very excited to see these two playing off of each other. I have a question, Lauren. How many fanfics did you write after you saw the trailer? Actually, none. Now, oh, okay. read. Okay. Yes. 
We have more casting news this time about Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I forgot this cartoon was happening. So Lawrence Fishburne is going to be executive producing an animated series based on the comics Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. The art looks good. It looks very much based off of Scotty Young's art. And Diamond White has been cast as the titular Moon Girl, uh, Lunella, I forget her last name. She's also been in Empire, The Bold and the Beautiful, Dear White People. She's also a voice actress who has been in such things as The Lion Guard, Sophia the First, and Transformer Rescue Bots. The rest of the cast includes Alfre Woodard as Lunella's grandmother Mimi. We remember her from Luke Cage. Libby Bearer as Lunella's best friend and manager, Casey. Sashir Zamita as, Lunel as Lunella's mom, Adria. Jermaine Fowler as Lunella's dad, James Jr. Fred Tadisior as Devil Dinosaur. And Gary Anthony Williams as Lunella's grandfather, Pops. Lawrence Fishburne will also voice the recurring role of the Beyonder, who is described as a curious and mischievous trickster. And we have Wakanda news. It was just announced this week, I think, that Ryan Coogler is working on a Wakanda series for Disney+. Plus. That's really all we know is that it's happening. We don't have a cast. We don't have a synopsis. We don't have a writer's list yet. We just know that it's happening. And I'm very excited. And we still are going to get the movie, though, right? Yes, they are working on it. I think they're supposed to start filming it later this year. Okay. And then Keanu Reeves was offered a role? Okay. Marvel has been trying to get Keanu Reeves in one of their movies for years, and he's always turned them down. Most recently, he has reportedly been offered the lead role in the Craven the Hunter Spider-Man spinoff that Sony is planning. I don't know if he'd take it. I'm interested in seeing what take on Craven that would be, since usually he's this like big buff professional wrestling kind of vaguely Russian guy. I don't know. Maybe they're going a more cerebral route. Who knows? But we don't even know if he'll take it. All we know is he's apparently been offered it and that the movie is happening. Well, you know, he's already a superhero as John Wick. Oh, yeah. And he's back working because, you know, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Part 3 or whatever that was. Yeah, that movie made me cry. I haven't seen it yet. Is it's worth it? really good. Okay. I liked it. All right. Well, that's it for our news this week. We're going to get on to a little bit of feedback now. Okay, we had a really interesting comment thread in response to the live tweet on Saturday. It starts off with Mr. Paraclete saying, in response to the claymation commercial, wow, that's dark. I'm trying to figure out the underlying meaning there. Is it about her living off magic or the Westview people not able to eat while under her control? To which Andy Mingno replied, how many days in outside time have passed? Like less than a week. Do they get food supplies if this will go on longer? And consultant Black Adam said, or it's a hint at someone else trying to live off her magic. And Mr. Paracletes again responded, also only commercial without the couple we've seen in all the other ads. I presume they're the voice actors for the shark and the boy. But that is a very interesting observation. Indeed. Michelle, what do you think there? Again, like I said, magic can't sustain life. And it's, it's really sad. What is she doing? I, this, really, this really reminds me of, I was watching on Twitch. I know this is really unrelated. It seems like Pleasantly Twisted is playing this game it's this tales game not like telltale games but it's this older rpg and everything and one of the characters is becoming an angel and in the process she's losing the ability to feel pain she doesn't know she doesn't eat and everything and 
they were talked she was talking on you know on there about how it's actually a thing like if your messages get interrupted like from your brain to your stomach and your stomach to your brain your stomach could be saying i'm hungry but your brain's not getting that message so you don't eat and th this is actually real things and such so is wanda able to somehow either give them a wait time to allow themselves to eat i mean they can't think about leaving agnes says wanda won't let us think about leaving but does wanda allow them to have like this really odd controlled life because peter talked about hey everyone basically has their same personalities families stay together they have better jobs they're getting better pay i don't know how that's possible but somehow they're getting like life's a little bit better in this version of Westview. So perhaps she's like allowing them. I don't know if that's really the right word, giving them enough freedom to eat and take care of bodily functions and such. Or is she able to put them in some sort of stasis where their brain's not getting that message? It's really dark when you start to think about all these little things. It's just, yeah. And talking about before, we were talking about Photon and the origin stories that go back and forth three times. The cops at the very beginning, they came out and went back in. So that's twice. If they go out again, did they go back in? I thought they, they just didn't drove have to go off. back in. They drove off. Oh, I thought they drove back in. No, no they, they drove. I off. don't think they were in there at all. They just said, "Hey, uh, this is happening," and then they drove off. Oh, go figure. But we didn't even talk about uh, speculation on who was doing this or not. You know, if it's Wanda, if it's somebody else, or or whatever. That's still ongoing throughout the whole thing. So yeah, there's. There's a lot to unpack here, and I can't. We have three episodes, and not much time either. Say each episode is like forty minutes, so it's basically a movie left that we have to figure this whole thing out. So, yeah, gonna be fun. I'm excited. In the meantime, Michelle, do you have a suggestion? Well, we get in our SUV, but we just couldn't hit that gas pedal hard enough, and uh, well, we're in the circus now. Being in the circus isn't all that bad. I mean, uh, Batman has had a couple of sidekicks come out of the circus. Just saying. Anyway, uh, thank you to everybody that's been listening to us and our coverage of WandaVision. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate all of the feedback that we've received. All the episodes are out now. I know I mentioned that we were talking about the episodes not being out. They're all out now. So go back and listen to them if you haven't already. And if you have some theories, we'd love to hear them. Thank you to the people who have been interacting with the live tweet. It's really interesting to hear what y'all are thinking and comparing it to obviously what I am thinking. I love seeing everybody just kind of bouncing ideas off of each other. And I can't wait to do it again this Saturday. Thank you again. Thanks to everyone who is hanging out in Discord. If you are concerned, we have a spoiler channel where immediately after WandaVision airs, everyone goes in there and talks about it. And then if they want to do general things or use spoiler tags, they go into our, you know, either Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, one or some general TV. But a lot of it is happening in the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. part of Discord. So if you're concerned about coming into our Discord and then getting a whole bunch of spoilers, we do have rules and we do enforce them. So you can just come in, you can have a general conversation, or you can have a spoiler conversation. It's all regulated. And you can find that at gunnageek.com slash discord. Until next time, I'm producer of the show, SP. I'm Agent Lauren. And I'm Agent Michelle. See everybody next week, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern, Geeks.Live. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. 
Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2021.